or reverend. Uh, be ready for a swim in the deep end. So, yes, and, and they are, God has used them as, as midwives, midwives to, to make uh, certain things uh, happen. So this morning I want to honor the leadership of the ministry, Bishop and uh, Bishop Jack and Reverend Emily, and all the leadership. I want to say may the Lord continue to uh, grace you and to grant you the wisdom as you continue to lead this great ministry into where he is showing you. Uh, we Let's celebrate them, even as we start this. Someone, let's celebrate uh, leaders this morning. So stewardship, I'm waiting to see it put up there. I can see that our three minutes are over. Stewardship is our title this morning. And there is, as Bishop spoke and said, it is a continuation of uh, our knowing, our purpose. I thought, and he said it has, it is not only about giving, it is not only about tithes and offerings, it's not only about money. And I wanted to see what is it about, even before I knew that uh, this was going to happen, what is it about? I was, I wanted, I was looking forward to that. And uh, I looked at the definition of what stewardship is. And it says that it is the way time, talents, material possessions, or wealth are used or given for the service of God, or how we use the gifts and resources that are given to us, utilizing and managing them all for his glory, utilizing and managing them all for God's glory. Um, and the betterment of others, all for God's glory and also for the good of others. Also, we would talk of it as uh, managing everything God brings into our lives, everything, including people, including resources, including everything, managing everything God brings into our lives as believers in a manner that honors God and impacts eternity. Everything that God brings our way in a manner that honors God and impacts eternity. Meaning that that which we shall do with that which God brings our way is supposed to honor God and not only honor God but also have an impact for eternity. Because when we think about the things of God, the things of God are eternal. And he never starts something that he does not complete. And that is why we would uh, ask stewards that everything we do honors God and impacts in eternity. So I thought today, and I was thinking about it, the Lord brought to me the issue of that, that which are these types of stewardship that a Christian the types of stewardship that a Christian ought to know and ought to have uh, and as God has sent us into this world because stewardship begins as early as Genesis chapter 1 when God created everything day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and on day 6 created the animals and finally created man in his own image and likeness and he also gave him authority. So this uh, issue of managing what God has given us to honor him was as early as in Genesis. And in the beginning, we say in the beginning God, because he's the alpha, he's the omega, he's the beginning of who we are, he's the beginning of our existence, he's the beginning of who we are and even the midway and to the very end. And so our stewardship begins with God. In the beginning God, because it is God who created us, Whoever made this pulpit had something in mind that the kind of use that it is going to be used for. And so it was made, it was 
tailor-made. It was packaged to suit the kind of work it was going to do. And uh, in the same way, God created each one of us in his own image and likeness. He created each one of us and packaged us for a purpose. He created each one of us and as stewards. A steward is given something and is asked to make use of it in the manner that the person who gives it to them would require them to. Now, if we decided to use this pulpit as a seat, of course, it would be so wrong. And every one of us would see that something is wrong. And so for each one of us, even as we do what we have to do as stewards, we use the instructions that are in the word of God so that the outcome is beautiful. Everything that God created on each side, inside of each one of us is a package, the outward the inward, and every other gift that God gives to us. It is for a purpose. So I want us to just look at types of stewardship as we also understand that God owns all. He's the creator. He's the giver of that gift. He's the one who redeems us. He's the beginning. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. And to also acknowledge that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, that includes us, uh, the world and all who live in it. Then Deuteronomy 10, 14 says, to the Lord your God, I'm just introducing uh, the types of stewardship, we'll get there. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, the earth, and everything in it. That includes me and you. Leviticus 25, 23 says, you are but aliens and my tenants. Very interesting. You are but aliens and my tenants. Uku tumeka ni mungu ametu tuwezesha. Rather, he has allowed us to stay. He has allowed us to stay. Leviticus 25, 23, you are but my aliens. You are but aliens, in other words, for a short while, and my tenants. You know, a tenant... There is the owner of the house. And uh, so at every other time you live there at his terms and conditions. So even here we are reminded you are but aliens and my tenants. That's what the Lord says. And as we uh, venture into these types of uh, stewardship, we also acknowledge that uh, we acknowledge God's majesty or sovereignty or holiness. And when we do, we tend to understand that we do not belong to ourselves, we belong to God. So in your own time, you can look at Psalms 104. It brings out exactly who God is and what he can do. His majesty, his clothed in honor, his clothed in majesty, that allows us to submit to him as his creation. And then Psalms 113, 4 says, the Lord is high above all nations. And in 1 Chronicles 29, 10 to 20, David acknowledged that God is the source of all things. He's the source of all things. And for him and by him, all things are created. That's Colossians 1:16. Uh, whatever in, is visible or invisible, the thrones, the dominions are created by him and for him. And uh, stewardship is an obedient witness to that God is sovereign. Stewardship is an obedient witness to that God is sovereign. I don't belong to myself. I have nothing of my own. Everything that God brings my way belongs to him, and I would use it the way uh, he would want me to use it. So types of stewardship, number one is uh, time. Time is a God-given resource to all. Time is a God-given resource to all. Clearly put across to us in the word of God in Ecclesiastes 9.11. Ecclesiastes 9.11. Ecclesiastes 9.11. I think uh, those of us who memorize the word of God uh, can remember what that says. I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. 
The wise sometimes go hungry, and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It is all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. The other version says, time and chance happen to us all. All. We all have opportunities. We all have the time and the chance. Being there at the right time. The time and the chance happens to us all. So time, we, we ought to, be, uh, to practice stewardship with regard to time. We have a short time to work and prepare ourselves and others for eternity and prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Time and chance happen to us all. Um, in Ephesians 5.16 reminds us we should redeem time for the days are evil. This is about uh, time, uh, a type of stewardship, the, the way we use our time, the way we use our time, redeeming, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The other version says redeeming time for the days are evil. We are stewards of every precious second that ticks into eternity because that's where we are going. We are stewards of every second, every minute, every week, every month, every year that God gives you. Right now we are celebrating 10 months into the year and we are starting the 11th month and we are saying we are stewards of every precious second, every week, every month, every year. Uh, when we celebrate birthdays, like we will ask this morning, who has celebrated their birthday? We are stewards of that time so that at the end of it, God will hold us accountable on how we utilize or how we use those years we are celebrating, how we use those seconds and that time we are celebrating to utilize that time that he has entrusted to us. So even as we celebrate, as we look at the time, as we look at the moments, as we share joyful moments, as we share those times when we are looking at how long and how good God has been to us throughout that time, we look at it and remember that as we do that, we, uh, God will hold us accountable for that time. God will hold us accountable for that time that he, it is him, who has entrusted this to us. The second type of stewardship is another T, is a ta talent or gift. Talent or gift. God created each person with special gifts. Please note special gifts. God created each person with special gifts. And maybe as I was sitting there this morning, I was thinking, Stewardship is very interesting. Sometimes we think that uh, we, we don't have much. And I told myself, what if you just remember that God woke you up and ask yourself, can I put my one leg ahead of the other? Can my foot, can this foot move ahead of the other? If it can, then I can go and encourage a sister or a brother. That too is stewardship. I, I, this this is uh, something that God has given each one of us. You might say all of us have legs, so what? It is not that it. God has given you, what if you just thought of how much of a gift uh, that, that your foot can move one before the other and you go and encourage someone. That too is a gift. And there is so much that God has put inside of us that we can make a difference. Our hands, you can reach out Hold a hand. Pray for someone. You don't need money. You don't need so many things. You don't need language. You don't need just say a prayer for someone. Use that hand that God has given you. And in, that is a gift that God has given to you. And you can encourage someone. Is it just but a smile that God has given you? That when you pass around someone and you put that smile on, Someone else is encouraged. That too is a gift that God has given us to be stewards of. And we shall give an account of it because it's been placed for us there. So I'm saying each person has a special gift. God created each person with a special gift. Special gifts. Give me Romans 12, 
verse 6 to 8. And they are different gifts. Each person with special gifts, each one of us, that we should never look down on ourselves, neither look down on others. Each person has a special gift that God has given. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Each one of us has a special gift. And each person with that special gift, God has given according to the grace uh, given to us. Irene this morning as she was leading prayer, she mentioned that too, that uh, these gifts are different, but according to the grace that God has given to us. And we should use them to prepare ourselves and others every other time to give God glory. First Peter 4.10 also backs up that scripture and says, uh, as we get um, the version, as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold, a lot of grace, the manifold grace of God. Manifold, it's a lot of grace. First Peter 4.10, each one should use whatever gift, whatever gift he has received to do what? To serve others, faithfully administering, eh? administering God's grace in its various forms. Administering God's grace in its various forms. Because we are gifted differently. And so, administer that grace faithfully in its various forms. And I've said, as good stewards. Meaning, the opposite is true. You can fail to be a good steward. So, as good stewards of the manifold. In other words, we acknowledge that it is the grace of God. It is the gift of God, one. He's the one who's given it. And two, he backs it up with the grace that is from him. And with that grace of God, again, we shall give an account. First Timothy 4.14, again, on the type of stewardship, talent, or gift. First Timothy 4.14. We are reminded, we are reminded that neglect not the gift that is in you. Neglect not. Do not neglect your gift. Do not neglect your gift. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. You might say, I have not had hands laid on me, but when you look at Psalms 139, we are reminded that it is God who formed us and created us and made us into who we are. And so, as much as we may say that, there is the gift which is given you. Neglect not that gift. It's a plea that was being given by Paul to Timothy. Do not neglect your gift. Uh, it says, there's a version that says that thy profiting may appear to all. I think it is the, the, the uh, yeah, that, that thy profiting may appear to all. Yeah, give us uh, King James Version, maybe to be clear that there. So the gift is for you and others. Do not neglect that gift. Do not let it go. Do not let it die. Do not let it go. 
neglect not that gift. It is for you and others. And it actually says, it shall save both you and those that hear you. It shall save both you and those that hear you. Or it shall save both you and those who, yes, neglect not the gift that is given, that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Verse 15, probably. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. And now that that gift is in you, stir it up. That's what you're being reminded. Neglect not that gift. For you, that gift is for you and others. So that you shall save both yourself and those that hear you. We are stewards of the various abilities that God has endowed us with in our lifetime. The various abilities and the giftings that God has endowed us with in our lifetime. Number three type of stewardship. A very interesting one here is the stewardship of the body temple, the temple as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit. You might uh, sometimes think, okay, um, like, what, why did God package me the way he did, or why did he give us bodies to live on this earth? It is uh, like uh, uh, Reverend Emily would always say, it, does, it is our legal tender to be here on earth. So it is our legal tender, but there is also a tag of stewardship to it. These bodies, this form that will finally uh, come to an end and our spirits will go back to God. So stewardship of the body temple. We are stewards and so we cannot use our bodies the way we want. <laughs> Very interesting. We cannot use our bodies for the activities that do not please God. We cannot afford to use our bodies for any activity that does not please God, including kupeleka migu mahali that does not please God. These, these are still our bodies. Uh, Romans 12, 11. Give us Romans 12, 11. And maybe as you give us Romans 12, 11, Romans 12, 11, it, it talks about our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is our reasonable service. Why does it say service? It, it, means, it means it has something to do with stewardship. Never be lacking in zeal uh, and keeping your spiritual power serving the Lord. That is, yes, that still has to do with the giftings. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual father. Star up, serving the Lord. Don't lack in zeal. Um, I'm looking for this scripture where our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I think, I, I, yes, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. You, yes, 6, 19 to 20. 6, 19 to 20. It says... Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Yes, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Stewardship. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. We had started by saying that stewardship is managing everything God brings into our lives in a manner that honors God. How we carry ourselves. So he says, you are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So stewardship of the body temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit Take good care of the body and remain in good health so that we can stay, stay strong to be able to do the work that God sent us here to do, to do the work of the kingdom and make good gain in the battle that we are in for the salvation of souls. 
Because when we don't take good care of our bodies, we can't go out for missions. When we don't take good care of our bodies, we can't serve where we're supposed to serve. And so, Third John 1, 2 is a prayer, is a prayer and um, that the writer of the letter of Third John, Third John is just uh, a lone letter. The chapter and the verses are one and the same. Third John 1, 2. Dear friend, you can say this even to your neighbor. It's a very good prayer. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. Another version says, even as your soul prospereth. It says, beloved, I wish above all things, above all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So they should go together. Spiritual food, physical food, the body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. We take care of it. And uh, we are, that too, we shall give an account to God concerning stewardship number three of the body temple. Number four is stewardship of our treasures. Maybe this is what we expected a lot, stewardship of our treasures. And when the word treasures is mentioned, maybe the scripture that says, uh, <laughs> where your heart is, there your treasures will be. We are only stewards of that which God has entrusted in our care. We are only stewards. We are only but stewards. In other words, nothing belongs to us. Nothing belongs to us. We are only stewards of that which God has entrusted in our care. We have to be faithful in returning our tithes and offerings. I need to repeat that. Because I don't think I'll be coming here soon. We have to be faithful in returning, returning to mepewa, not to, we are just giving back, like, like you see this child, you give a biscuit and you tell nikatiye kadogo, yeah? And so anashika back, yeah? So we are saying, we are only stewards of that which God has entrusted in our care. When you used to go to church, when you were small, our mother would take us to church and we would sing a certain hymn that says, Neke we na kiota heiruo, dire de na kio ita heiruo, idoshia kwa deo muramati, na nego igoria shia na ho deka, deidia gogo shida gie. Na kere agio de de na kio, oya goro mwere na meshiria, i kogo shida gie we mwadi wakoa. That is stewardship of our treasures. We have nothing of our own. Says. Give to the cause of God. When we're in college, you say, spend and be spent of the gospel. Spend and be spent of the gospel. That which God has placed in our hands, we have to be faithful in returning our tithes and offerings. Give to the cause of God. Why? This is eternal. Spend and be spent of the gospel. It is an opportunity of supporting it is an opportunity of supporting an eternal cause. Something that will outlast you. Something that will outlast you. Something that will bring glory to God. Something that will outlast you. I want to repeat that one. No one has asked me to repeat, but I want to repeat this one. That it is an opportunity when we give our tithes and our offerings, it is an opportunity.
to support an eternal cause. Eternal cause. The gospel is preached as we give. The gospel is preached to someone. They give their lives to Christ. They become partakers of eternal life. It is uh, supporting an eternal cause. And Matthew 6, 19 to 21 says, Where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. And we are cautioned not to put our treasures where the moth will easily eat it. I hope we are there, Matthew. Yes. Lay not up for yourselves. For yourselves. Hapo tunajiambia. I can do this. I can do this. I can plan for this. I can save this. I can eat that. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Right. I do not want to uh, say belabor on that one. I want uh, to continue and say stewardship number five type is stewardship of our testimony. Of our testimony. When we give our testimony, a testimony, the, the testimony begins with the word test, meaning umepitia, but you've come through the other side. And there is a rejoicing that would strengthen another person. Stewardship of testimony. The testimony that we give to other people about God is very important. You should not keep to yourself what God, you and I, we should not keep to ourselves what God has done. God expects us as his children to always tell of his goodness to those that we come into contact with. A little boy whose father buys him a toy, car, a toy, train, a toy, whatever, will quickly carry this toy and take it to the other boys and I say, see what daddy bought for me. Eh? A testimony. And so they think, daddy can buy for me something also. A testimony. We should not hold it back. We should allow others to hear that which God has done so that they are strengthened in their walk of faith. The stewardship of our, see testimony, yako, our testimony. Bishop and Reverend are very good at that, reminding us, seeing, you know, I keep remembering her story of trying to get water with the many frogs. Eh? And uh, yes, and see how far the Lord has brought them. It's like the song we would sing, and I think we still sing, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. You just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. I'm going to praise him. Look what the Lord has done. And so, look what the Lord has done. What the enemy has done, he's stolen our testimony. You know how? When you give your testimony, he makes you feel like you're being proud. When this boy goes with a little toy out there to play with the other boys, they don't think about it. Actually, they want to take that toy and share it. You can play with it this time. Ride the bike up to that point. Come back. It is daddy who bought it, isn't it? That's what they do. And the same way, 
This is what God is reminding us. The stewardship of our testimony. The stewardship of our testimony. God expects us as his children. Is God your father? Has he done something for you as his child? Give that testimony to someone. Has he done something for you as his child? However small it may look, it may not be what others are saying. But that which you have is what that other person needs. Give that testimony of what God has done. And uh, we tell of his goodness to those we come into contact with. We tell of his goodness. Little children are very good at priding with their fathers. Very good. Priding with their fathers. Daddy can do this. Actually, you should find them arguing. Daddy can do this for me. No. Uh, well, how is it? You know, my, mine is like this. Mine works here. Mine does this. You know, little children. They, they just talk about the goodness of their fathers. Why not us? Why not us? Because indeed, God has been good to us. Just think about it. There is someone you can tell of God's goodness. There is someone you can definitely tell of God's goodness. Like what we have had this morning from Minister Anne, God's goodness. When she shared that, I'm sure your heart was revived. First Peter 3.15. First Peter 3.15. First Peter 3.15. It, it tells us as we get that scripture on the screen, be always ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason for your hope. The reason. Why are you still holding on, in other words? Why? It says, sanctify, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready Always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with humility and fear, with meekness and fear. Be always, stewardship, always ready. Be always ready to give a testimony of the goodness of God. Even if what you prayed for has not uh, come. The answer has not come. God is still good. And so, you always have an answer to those who ask you, why are you still holding on? And yet, we are not seeing like what you told us is going to happen is happening. Be always ready to just say, my God is good. He has not changed. And he does not get tired of doing good to us. And we, you, 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 you keep singing that song. He keeps on doing. He keeps on doing. He hasn't stopped. Even if mine has not come, he keeps on doing great things. He keeps on doing great things. He keeps on doing. He has not changed. We change. Friends change. Things change, circumstances change, but this God, uh, who is my God, I am giving a testimony that he keeps on doing great things because he is a good God. Give a testimony of the goodness of God and someone's heart will be strengthened. So we must bear testimony. Is it a healing? Please give a testimony. Is it joy? Give a testimony in the midst of the circumstances that God has given you joy. Is it hope? Give a testimony. Give a testimony. Our testimony and our testimonies serve as an anchor. Mahali pa kushikilia tu siyanguke. They serve as an anchor to carry us through difficult times. Our testimonies serve as an anchor. Ata kama utajiambia yourself, give yourself a testimony of what God has so far done. You tell yourself, Joyce, don't you remember what God did for you? 
in this year or in this time. Our testimonies serve as an anchor to carry us through difficult times and strengthen us to overcome the machinations and the devices of the enemy. Our testimonies, they are an anchor. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. It's another anchor. It's another anchor. It keeps the soul steadfast because it reminds your soul. Why are you so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in this God. Put your hope in the God who took you through 2020. Put your hope in this God during whose time we were wearing masks. You did not see your neighbor. Uh, you, you saw them as suspects at that time. Put your hope in that God who has now kept you up till this far. Put your hope in God. You remind yourself, it's a testimony. Why are you downcast? You're telling yourself, why, by the way? Why? Why are you downcast? Even if things are not working the way you want them to work, they don't seem to. Why are you downcast? Put your hope in God, this God who does not change. He changes not. It is an anchor to carry us through difficult times. Um, and we shall be able to be able to overcome that. And Revelation 12, 11 says, I think we all know that, that we, they overcame. Revelation 12, 11, as I wind up. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Sazingine's testimonies sound like failures. Like you're talking too much about yourself. Like you're talking too much. Um, but, but this is about God. It is about telling someone so that they also see. So see Mimi to, to Tafaulu. We shall make it. We shall pull through. So after all, it is possible. You went through that. You came through. You're successful. You're standing. Then even me too, I will hold on. That is what a testimony does. It will strengthen you. It will anchor you. It will keep you on hold. It will position you. It will keep you standing. You shall not waver. And if that other sister or brother is wavering, when you give them your testimony, they wonder, oh, I have just been seeing you work. The How did you even make it? And this is done to the glory of God. And God be glorified as we give those testimonies. And we say, again, one is an anchor. Our testimonies serve as a glue that solidifies the faith of the weak. A glue, it solidifies. You see, the, the faith could be in bits and pieces. And you're wondering, where do I hold on to? But our testimony serves as a glue that solidifies the faith of the weak and helps the one without faith to take a stand in the Lord. Helps the one whose faith is weak and, and to take a stand in the Lord. Has the Lord empowered you to overcome a habit, a very bad habit? Tell someone about it, that God helped you to overcome that habit and they too will be able to stand and be strong and trust God that they will overcome that habit. Has the Lord healed you? Like we said, uh, encourage a friend also. Let your light, as Matthew 5, 14 to 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. That they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. The little kids in Sunday school would sing this little light of mine. It's little. That testimony might look little. That whatever you're doing or telling someone might look little. That handshake, that prayer of five minutes might look little. But let it shine. Let it shine so that others may see the way. There's also the song that says, carry your candle for all to see it. Hold out your candle. Huh? Go light 
the world. There's someone who needs that candle of yours held out. You might think it doesn't mean much. And I thought, do I give this example or not? But let me give it because <laughs> it came to my heart. I see people who, who, who smoke cigars so quickly. They don't know each other. Lakini akija na yake na anataka to light their, theirs. Na mwingine anapita, they first stop and allow them to light theirs. And then continue with it. Ata haulizani unaitwa nani? They don't. They don't ask. They don't ask. They don't ask. They are so kind to one another. So kind. Anafanya tuivi. <laughs> and they don't even ask, what kind of cigar are you smoking? Is yours better than mine? Or is mine better than yours? Ulinunua wapi? Is yours keraiko or is mine, you know, whatever it is. No. Imagine they are so quick. And <laughs> mine has light. I give you, I go my way. Huh? I don't know. God laid that in my heart and I was like, do I say this in church? But I have said it. Yeah. I, I am sure I, the, the, <laughs> we have understood what we are saying that let's light one another's lives. Let's not think, where are you coming from? Where are you going? What is your name? Huh? Which church do you go to? We, we are the body of Christ. Let's light. Where do you work? Huh? No, 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 no. Let's light one another's lives. Let's hold out that candle. Let's hold out that candle before men, and God will give us the light. And 2 Timothy, as I finish, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of 2 Timothy 1, verse 7 to 8. And then, um, yes, good. Uh, God, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline, verse 8. So never be ashamed. To light another's candle or to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. That was now Paul. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. And finally, 1 Corinthians 4, 1, 2. It is required of us as stewards that a man be found faithful. 1 Corinthians 4, 1, 2. So look at Apollos and me as mere servants of Christ who have been put in charge of explaining God's mysteries. God has put you in charge of something. That gift that is inside of you, God has put you in charge of it. Verse 2. Verse 2. Now, a person who is put in charge as a manager must be faithful. It is required of stewards to be found faithful with the five. Faithful with time, faithful with treasures, faithful uh, with the body temple, faithful with our testimony. Right? That we be found faithful. I'd like us to stand and probably sing this uh, one hymn that says, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. That, that hymn breaks down everything that we have. Take my moments, my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my heart, my Lord, I pour. Take my love, take everything. Take, take, take my life and let it be. I would that we stand maybe as we, uh, as we wind up. Let it be a prayer. Let it be a prayer uh, to uh, uh, Take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee 
Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move. as you would we give all the glory and all the honor to you as you remind us that we are stewards that we are tenants and that we have at the end of it to give an account of that which you've given to us help us Lord to light another's candle help us Lord to hold another's hand help us Lord to give our testimonies help us Lord to strengthen one another in this journey all to the glory and to the honor of your name. We give you praise and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I believe we can appreciate her better than that. As we take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that so good? What a way to begin that uh, topic, the theme of this month, Christian stewardship. And you know, as she was ministering, I was um, imagining, you know, she's a teacher by profession. So I was thinking, what if she quickly decided we are going to...